Good evening. Welcome to Evening Prayer. I'm Pastor Vance Mortensen coming to you on behalf of the Racket Lake Chapel. Tonight's service is going to be an evening prayer service from the Celtic Daily Prayer Book. And I'd like to open with this prayer. As we go through this service, I would like us to keep in mind what the presence of God means to us. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may truly worship you and give thanks. And this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our opening sentences tonight. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. Out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord, hear my voice. With my whole heart I want to praise you, O Lord, hear my voice. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, who could stand? Who could stand? I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word do I hope. And now our expressions of faith. Lord, you have always given bread for the coming day, and though I am poor, today I believe. Lord, you have always given strength for the coming day, and though I am weak, Today, I believe. Lord, you have always given peace for the coming day, and though of anxious heart, today I believe. Lord, you have always kept me safe in trials, and now, tried as I am, today I believe. Lord, you have always marked the road for the coming day, and though it may be hidden, today I believe. Lord, you have always lightened this darkness of mine, and though the night is here, today I believe. Lord, you have always spoken when time was ripe, and though you be silent now, today I believe. I'd like to read Psalm 139 tonight. The members of the chapel have been on a course taking them through wisdom literature in the Bible, and we have in this past week turned to the Psalms. And if we look at Psalm 139, again, the theme is the presence of God. There is a uh, little book called uh, Praying the Psalms, and it was uh, written by Richard J. Foster, and I thought I'd read a little bit uh, from this, a little introductory comment, and then Psalm 139. Our prayer life and spiritual progress depend very much upon the idea we constantly have of God. If, for example, we look upon God only as a friend, our approach to Him will be open, frank, and unrestrained. If we guard Him, only as the one who will judge our lives, we shall be reserved and approach with reverent fear. But whatever attitude we constantly adopt towards God, it must ultimately be based firmly upon our own humility. And that is to say we must recognize God's greatness and holiness and realize our own nothingness and complete dependence upon God. Psalm 139. O oh Lord, you have searched me through and have known me. You have known my sitting down and my rising up. You have read my thoughts from afar. You have observed my going forth and my being still you are aware of all my ways. Neither is there speech on my tongue save what was known to you before, 
before and behind you have compassed me about and laid your hand upon me. Your knowledge is too wonderful for me, so exalted I cannot attain it. Whither shall I go from your spirit? Whither flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I rest with the dead, you are there also. Were I to take the wings of dawn and dwell in the distant parts of the sea, even there your hand would lead me, and your right hand would bear me along. I cannot say, surely darkness shall envelop me, and night be the light around me, for darkness is not dark to you, and the night shines as the day. Darkness is as as light as day. For you have fashioned my innermost being. You formed me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks that I am wonderfully made. How wonderful are your works, and as my mind knows full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret, when I was delicately formed in the depths of the earth. Your eyes did see me yet unborn. In your book all was written. Days passed even before one of them had come to be. Your thoughts are too excellent for me. How great is the sum of them. If I would number them, they would outnumber the sand. Were I to come to the end of them, I should still be there with your vast being. In the last two verses, search me through, O God, and know my heart. Prove me and know my thoughts, and see if there is any harmful way in me, and lead me along the everlasting path. Through the first three sections of this verses, first of all, verses one through six, we are we have revealed to us that God's presence is throughout time, past, present, and future. And this is an amazing revelation for us. We hear the psalmist after he says, you've known my sitting down and my rising up, says, the knowledge is too wonderful for me, so exalted I cannot attain it. The next set of verses, verse 7 through verse 12. The first set we First set of verses we talked about the dimension of time and God's presence in time, and this set of verses talks about the dimension of space and God's presence. It opens with, whither shall I go from your presence and whither flee from your presence? And the psalmist talks about it doesn't matter where I go, God is there. The third section, verses 13 through 18, talks about a dimension that I would talk about, creation mystery. There are things that we encounter in scripture in our lives that we simply don't understand thoroughly or don't understand at all. And the psalmist here tries to capture that in this way. For you have fashioned my innermost being. You formed me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks that I am wonderfully made. I don't know how, but it happened. So in the dimension of space, and by that I mean here and over there or down there, up there, out there, everywhere, God is present reminds me of the inscription over the door of the psychologist Carl Jung. As visitors came to see him, they were greeted by this above the front door. Bidden or not bidden, God is present. Bidden or not bidden, God is present. It doesn't matter where we are in time or the cycle of our lives. Where we are in space, whether we're here at home or in a strange place, whether we're in a place of disaster, a place of 
of danger where we are threatened by natural and other forces. And as we try to understand and come to grips with this notion of uh, all present God, we encounter things like the mysteries. So just looking around us and, and look at the, the life that we're in, the place that we live, the, the natural world around us. And indeed, we were wonderfully made as was all of creation. With all of this in mind, we can still call upon God and we should. The little two verse prayer here kind of sums it up. Search me through, O God, and know my heart. Prove me and know my thoughts and see if there is any harmful way in me and lead me along the everlasting path. We ought to know a lot about ourselves. In fact, we ought to be the experts about ourselves, but we all know that we are not always good judges of when we assess uh, ourselves and where we are and where we need to be. That little tune line prayer, ask God to, to make us aware of God's presence in our lives and reach out to it when we need to. May it be so. Amen. I want to continue with our evening prayer out of the Celtic Daily Prayer Book. In the shadow of your wings, I will sing your praises, O Lord. The Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the refuge of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? In the shadow of your wings, I will sing your praises, O Lord. One thing I ask of the Lord, one thing I seek, to dwell in the presence of my God and to gaze upon your holy place. In the shadow of your wings, I will sing your praises, O Lord. I believe I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. O wait for the Lord, have courage and wait, wait for the Lord. In the shadow of your wings, I will sing your praises, O Lord. Would like to take a moment of silence and as we offer up our prayers of praise and thanksgiving and petition to God. Now, Lord, I ask your strength and, and, and help for Jim, who is battling against a serious case of, of cancer. And I ask support for his family who are around him. I ask for healing for Victoria. I would ask for comfort for the families of those first responders who have met with violence this past week in what seems to be just a, a horrific number of casualties. And I would like to raise a prayer of thanks, Lord, for our friend Elizabeth, who keeps our website up to date. In closing, See that we are at peace among ourselves, my friends, and that we love one another. Follow the example of good people of old, and God will comfort us and help us, both in this world and in the world to come. Let us never forget that, bidden or not, God is present. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord and love and serve each other. Thank you for joining Evening Prayer. Good night.